Hey, Agent Smith, how's it going? FBI. Open up. Just a late night stream here. Uh, I got a build for Lance tonight. It needs to be done tomorrow. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't going to stream tonight. Um, that was actually mostly because of a mail migration that I was in the middle of. That I didn't think was going to be completed tonight. But we did end up getting through the mail migration. And so I am going to make this happen. I was actually worried about making notifications happen this late. I was like, ah, I don't know. Don't know how people are going to feel about this. But here we go. All right, so going through the build real quick. This is probably going to be a quick stream. We're going to be probably an hour-ish to completion or less. Um, so we're going to start off with the CPU. Uh, this is about a as good of a computer you can buy brand new with uh, with this budget that we had. Um, so just an FYI. This is a Ryzen 5 4500. Um, for those of you who don't know it, it's really a kind of souped up Ryzen 5 3600. Um, pretty much all it is. And then you're gonna be putting that on a gigabyte B450M DS3H Wi-Fi. This is a motherboard that supports Wi-Fi, um, which I try to always have on the motherboards nowadays. Um, because there's just so many people that just don't have Ethernet connections. So anytime I'm working with anybody that needs, um, or first time getting into a PC, I always try to make sure there's Wi-Fi. Agent Smith, let's go! <laughs> um, we're gonna be cooling the CPU with a ID cooling, four heat, heat pipe to tower air cooler. This is the SE214XT. Um, it does have addressable RGB PWM fan, which is some nice flare. Um, but it's a great cooler to replace the stock, and it is a great budget option. Um, then we've got a one terabyte M.2 NVMe. That's a great budget drive. These are actually on sale at Micro Center right now for 50 bucks. Um, so if you do have a Micro Center nearby and you need more storage, I highly recommend grabbing this one. Then we've also got a, six, a kit of 16 gigabytes DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM by Silicon Power. This is normally not a brand that I will use, but again, we were on a very tight budget for this build, so. And then we're gonna use a 500 watt bronze power supply to power everything. Um, so it, this is not modular, but it does have nice black cables to match the build theme. And then we are using a GTX 1660 Super. This is a new card. The box was actually damaged on the way here. So uh, that is why it is out of the packaging. And I'm just going to unpackage it anyway. Um, and I needed to check the card before we plug it in the system. So. The case is our X1 by Montech. This is actually a really nice um, ATX mid-tower case that I don't do a lot of builds in unless they're tight budgets. But they it include it's an ATX mid tower. It's black. It's got tempered uh, tempered side glass and front mesh and four uh, I'll call them LED RGB lights fans that actually do move a lot of good air. Um, it's just you can't customize the uh, RGB on them. The only thing we'll be able to customize RGB on is the the CPU cooler through the software. And without further ado, let's get into it gonna be a quick build but I did promise Lance I would stream this so we are streaming it and he's picking it up tomorrow so those are my that's my deadline squeezing it in here tonight we've been extremely busy just getting the motherboard out of the box There's our B450. That was weird. Um, there's our B450. Beautiful board here. I 
don't think I've ever seen that in my life of building. I don't know if maybe I had something on my hand when I opened it. That was weird. All right, so anyway, we're gonna move forward. Then that didn't happen. Sure, it's fine. Oh, hello, I was smart already. <laughs> okay, today. I need it done today by uh, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. So we're just unboxing our processor here. I, so two weird things so far. Sticker actually came off the plastic here and is now currently on this, but this was here. I don't think I've ever seen that before either. Lance, I'm starting to get worried about your build. Whatever. We don't have an AMD sticker now. If we need one, I can steal another one. This is a brand new processor. I just broke the seal, so... in case but it was brand new so it was sealed went right in there just fine there's our cpu we're not going to be using the stock cooler we're gonna pop this ram open and get this installed my scissors tools are all over the place but uh, this plastic it can actually be a pain in the butt to get into so I just cut through it hey Rose what's up my daughter sky H hey Lance awesome work oh it's Lance hey Lance how's it going man I told you we would stream it we're streaming it Lance is over on YouTube for awareness because we do stream to facebook twitch and youtube all at the same time all three channels are lit up we are currently getting your ram installed but you can go back and uh, watch the, the video the full video if you need to I, I know I abruptly just ran into it and started it, but I needed to get going. Getting late. But here's our 16 gigabytes of silicone power RAM. Gonna get added here. Gotcha. And then we've got our one terabyte M.2 SSD that we're going to install. It's going to go in our M.2 slot. Again, these uh, plastic packaging is becoming more and more popular. Remove the two screw that's in here. Slide the M.2 into the slot. Get it mounted here. There go. There's our CPU, our RAM, and our SSD on the board. Now we're going to get this uh, ID Cooling Tower Air Cooler installed, which will definitely help keep the CPU cool. I'll be your Facebook support for the night. Oh, thanks, Leah. For those of you who don't know, over on Facebook, Leah is my wife. I'm so geeked. Yeah, I've been here since 
since you've seen okay perfect Lance over on YouTube is uh, who we're building this for right now. We're just getting the cooler installed. We have to uh, make sure the CPU stays nice and chill for any of the long gaming sessions we have ahead. Uh, we're going to remove these uh, screwdriver we are going to remove these plastic dock brackets and we're going to replace them with brackets that come with this cooler we are going to reutilize the back plate which also comes with the motherboard and we're going to use these plastic fittings here these ones that's LGA 1700. This is not an Intel board. These are not the fittings you're looking for. And so we've placed the fittings here, the spacers, and then we're going to grab this bracket, which just sits here for a second. And we should have a total of four that we're going to be using for this. Um, I'm actually not sure if it's this one or this one. But actually, no idea. This one. Here we go. This will secure the bracket which will mount I'm so geeked yeah I've been here since you sent it I think I already read that comment sorry I look down and I forget everything well I love building part of the reason okay so we're not going to use these we're going to put them back in the back we're not going to use those 1700 spacers. We're going to put it back in the bag. This is an Intel backplate. We're not going to be using that. We're not going to use that uh, thermal paste that comes with it because we're going to use thermal grizzly. And then we're going to grab these AMD stock brackets, put them in the bag. That's all out of the way and done. Now let's peel this bad boy off. Don't ever forget to do that because it will not cool. Run like crap. And we actually need to open up a new tube here of Thermal Grizzly. There's our big brand new tube of Thermal Grizzly paste, certified from Thermal Grizzly. Nice uh, cross pattern there. X marks the spot. Want to make sure we place it in the right orientation here. You see how the heat pipes kind of come up and then bend to the left here, straight up. That's to offset the ram. Put it in like this, which is totally spun around, hovering over the ram. Wouldn't be able to access that spare slot in the tube without having to remove the heat sink. So that's why we are making sure we put this on the right way. And then there's two thumb screws, but they're Phillips driven, Phillips screwdriver driven, uh, which will secure it onto the bracket that we added as well. And then applies pressure to the CPU. You do want a bit of pressure on it, because it is actually not only uh, pulling the heat off the CPU, but is also applying pressure on the CPU into the socket. So without that pressure, it may not even post.
There we go. Now we're going to add the 120 millimeter PWM adjustable RGB fan. It's here for now, and then we're going to use these little clips to clip the fan onto the Covering it up a little bit. Yep. Now our fan is mounted, and we're gonna get it plugged in. So, WM cutter. We have an addressable, addressable RGB, five volt, three pin RGB. Conveniently, right here in the top corner. Cables are gonna get tucked in the back of the case tied up so nice and neat it won't stay there but our motherboard is now ready for the case so we're gonna set this aside get our case out and I'm anticipating it too. All right, here is our Montec X1 ATX mid tower. I miss you too, kiddo. This is our ATX mid tower. We have uh, Lots of uh, cables just floating around in here, which we're going to send to the back with the case once we get that opened up. It is a little bit of a tight fit on the back side on this case, but it is a budget case. <coughs> but it gets the job done. In my opinion, it is the best budget case you can buy. this is what I'm talking about you really don't have much space on the back you have this channel right here for your cables and that's about it anything else you're running is gonna be smash and push that's so a little tight but if, uh, work with that then it should be okay and we'll be able to work with it uh, for this build for sure not a problem But for awareness, if you ever thought about building in this case, there it's tight on the back. Oops. Trying to get rid of these extra twisty ties. You guys have no idea how many twist ties I deal with on a daily basis. Then we're going to take these extra cables and we're going to feed it up here through this slot so that the cables aren't sitting here in the front. We get uh, some good cable management here. And so, for those of you who are wondering, uh, Rose, who's over on YouTube, is my daughter. And she's currently over at Grandma's house, spending the night. So that is why she is hanging out with us tonight. Apparently, she misses my dad jokes. <laughs> I find that quite acceptable. Uh, just need to get this little piece over. There we go. Good as it's going to get there. Now you can see we have our cables neatly ran to the back of the case. 
don't have that big wire nest on the front, which we don't want. And we're kind of ready to slap this motherboard in here. So we got our back I.O. plate. Our shield. And that goes right here towards the back of the computer. Just not upside down like I was going to try to put it in. And it will snap into place here. Quick and easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Next, we could get our motherboard in here, but we want to take a look at a couple of things. Number one are our studs. We want to make sure these are all in the right places for mounting a motherboard. This is a micro ATX motherboard. These aren't going to be utilized, but we are missing a stud here and here. Important to have all of your studs. Nobody finds that funny. And that will be located here in this bag, which is your hardware that comes with your case. We're gonna go ahead and grab that. And you can see here, your uh, studs are there and waiting. Okay, motherboard is ready to go in. We got all our studs in the right places. We're just going to line up the back plate here. And then we're going to lean over, double check that uh, it's instructing our ports on the back. Just to double check because it's always a pain once you install it to remove all the screws to fix any problems like that. And everything looks clear. So then we got uh, just a few screws here to steer the board to the case. We need some more magnetization our screwdriver our screw wants to escape escape a escape 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 no escape and then I want to make sure it's all lining up nicely there are holes I tighten this first one down. You know what? I think I'm going to use the other screwdriver, honestly. That one did not like threading for the head. No comment. Gravity was not my friend in this situation. So just two more screws here and we will have the motherboard successfully mounted to the case. And we can start plugging in our front panel. There we go. So all of our screws are in place. I'm going to take these uh, cables here that are from the CPU fan. I'm going to tuck it in this nice little hole. It's going to go to the back of the case so we have that out of the way not floating around inside. Fight me. There we go. 
Um, so next we have USB 3.0. We got our front panel power reset, LED connections, um, our front panel audio that we need to connect, and then really just slap the card in there, slap the power supply in there, fire it up, and see if we're cooking with the uh, bacon grease or something. Something in that nature. Pretty much everything's going to be ran on the side here. And just a little bit of cable management. I'm going to start with our uh, power switch, our LEDs, and reset button. If you don't know the pin layout for these, you can always look it up in the manual. The manual will show you exactly which pins go to what. We have a nice diagram for you to follow. But I have built so many computers, I could probably do that blindfold with now. So USB 2.0 for the front panel next to the USB header. And we have our front panel audio, or HD audio is what it's going to be labeled these days. That goes to the FP audio or HD audio header. And then last but not least, we have our USB 3.0 header for the front panel. Usually looking like this. All only goes in one way, so it's hard to mix that up. Now that that's all plugged in, we're going to take the extra slack from the cables and pull it all through and zip tie it up the front side to make sure it's nice and neat. Because we only do clean here. zip ties. I have like a billion zip ties floating all over the place here. Any direction you look, you'll find a zip tie. Nice speaks, those shoes. So the reason why I ran these cables like this, in this case specifically, because it's a micro ATX motherboard, but an ATX case, and I hate seeing cables down here. I'd rather see them on the side like this. It just looks so much cleaner than a bunch of cables hanging on the bottom. Much cleaner looking. Go. Nope. So that's all done. We're gonna snip these and tails off of these zip ties. And we can smash our graphics card in here. Wipe our power supply in, plug a few things in, do a little bit of cable management, fire it up, call it a night. Not too bad. Power supply or bleh, graphics card. This is Zotac Gaming GeForce Art uh, GeForce. 
GTX 1660 Super. Uh, it's a wonderful 6 gigabyte GDDR6 card. And will literally play anything you want to throw at it in your 1080p screen resolution. So it's a great card to start with. It will get the job done. Give you the best possible gaming experience on a budget. And it also beats the consoles. We're just going to slide that into our PCI Express 16 slot, which is that top slot that we just popped it into. Um, going to start one screw. There's two screws here on the side that you have to use to mount it. Here. Okay. I'm going to start with the bottom one tight. The reason why I put a little bit of pressure on there is so that the ports don't get stuck underneath these lips. The metal, the metal here. That will happen actually from time to time. There we go. Starting to look like a gaming PC now, huh? I hate how my camera's kind of glitching there. But anyway. Power supply time. By the way, I still have not put my new CPU in my streaming rig, which is supposed to resolve the whole glitchiness here. You see the glitchy, glitchy, glitchy? Resolve that. Haven't, haven't actually done that yet, so. We hit this huge wall called Busy, and it's been nothing but busy. Those fell out of the bag. So here is our power supply. Nice black cables, 500 watts, 80 plus bronze. We're just going to get it slide in, fan down, because the ventilation for the power supply is on underneath the case. One thing that could be a little bit better on the case is probably the height on the feet, but it's not terrible. Definitely not something you want to put on the carpet. It's on a hard surface. That goes for any computer. Always make sure it's a hard surface. Don't pour on the carpet. Flex way too much dust down there. just four screws here that uh, mount the power supply here on the back of the case. This is what powers the computer. 500 watts. 80 plus bronze. These cables will kind of get cleaned up here a little bit later. But for the most part, we're uh, Gonna run this 24 pin in the motherboard here towards the top towards the motherboard and then our cpu all tangled up here uh it runs up to this top right corner 
And then our PCIe, the graphics card, is going to run up the side or through this bottom hole. That'll go to the graphics card. And then I'm actually going to bundle these up. There is a Molex centipede in here. I call this a Molex centipede. Um, that will need a Molex connection power. And that is for power to the fans. And that's what I was saying by the fans. They're a little bit cheap, but they do move the air and they, they're not bad. Hey Dev, Mr. Duck, what's up? What's going on, my man? Thanks for stopping in and saying hi. I appreciate you, sir. We're just, you know, late night, late night building. This is uh, usually crazy time of the year where it gets super busy. Move this. That just makes sense to me. Crazy time of the year where we build around the clock. What are you building? What's the specs? This is a um, Ryzen 5 4500 and uh, 16 gigs DDR4, 3200 megahertz, G450, Wi Fi, gigabyte motherboard, um, GTX 1660 Super. A one terabyte SSD with a 500 watt bronze rated 80 plus bronze rated power supply built into an X1 Montec case and the cooler is actually ID cooling it's a uh, power air cooler with four heat pipes so it's a uh, it's a $650 budget what we are building right now so for those of you who are looking for a gaming PC, it is possible to build a pretty decent PC that will get the job done better than any console. Way better. And make it so that you can upgrade in the future, especially on this AM4 platform. Thank you, AMD, for allowing that to happen. Um, and it looks absolutely awesome when it's done the price cannot beat it there we go we got our 24 pin over here plugged in we got our EPU 8 pin plugged in up there and then our 8 pin PCIe connection for the graphics card plugged in so this is pretty much done on the front side minus maybe one more zip tie I can see where I need it we're going to flip this over, do the cable management back here real quick. We'll fire it up. Y'all see that? Got a post. All the weird stuff that was happening when we opened the brand new chip. The French. Really, we just want to make sure that the cables don't pop back through the holes, and we want to make sure it's neat because that is our standard over here. Nice for sure, man. Yeah, we're actually almost at the finish line here already. <laughs> like I know what I'm doing. That I'm not, and I'm not building a PC with like 18 fans. Each fans, fan takes like 10 minutes plus. This 
this one's going to stay grounded. No hovering. Do 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 do. Beautiful. These I'm really not gonna do much with because so tight here. They're gonna, gonna struggle with the back the back panel anyway. So I'm not going to do anything with those. I want those to be able to move. Um, so I'm going to leave those as is. They need some flexibility. Mobility. Last one we want to kind of zip tie here. Is... Help put the zip tie in the right way. Backwards. And one more. I don't like how it's just flapping here. There we go. Back panel. Really can go in one way. A little bit of pressure. Under pressure. That'll get the job done. Oh, well. What's the space? Uh, sorry, or you already asked that question. I already answered it. Sorry. Here, see my head. Right on. We're actually uh, going to fire this bad boy up here in just a second. lightning on that. Okay. There she is. We're actually going to keep the glass off while we fire it up. Only because I know my camera is going to glare a little bit with the lighting. Have a glare and they will not hinder me. Y'all ready for this? Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Show me the signs of life. Come on, baby. We're just waiting for our post. Maybe it's the... AMD usually does take a minute. For his... Taking its dear sweet time on the post. No post yet.
I don't really see any lights on the board. Nothing to stand. See the problem? Hmm. I'm gonna pop this light back on. Take an El Pito. I think we're gonna clear the CMOS on the motherboard just to double check. Well, let's do a one quick power cycle. Should have posted by now. Oh, there it is. I don't know what the deal is there. But AM4. On a B450 too. They are picky. So we are new CPU installed. Um, yelling at me about the FT, FTPM as normal. So, Mr. Lance, here's your build. We just got to load up Windows, do all the drivers, go through the battle-tested phase, make sure it's all A-OK, -okay. cooling and performing where it should be, and then we certify it and you can pick it up. What do you think, sir? Here, let me shut this back off. I just thought I was going to have to go in there and do something. Like, maybe I put the CPU in upside down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's your build, sir. Thoughts? Compliments? Cheers? Maybe Lance had to go take a potty break. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, that's the build we did tonight. Uh, I do have another one coming up here, possibly tomorrow night, definitely on Saturday, and then another one on Sunday for sure. So lots of builds this weekend. It's like a, it's like a build stream marathon this weekend. So feel free to stop in anytime this week if you have any questions or if you want to just hang out and chill. Um, lots of cool things. Hey, Redneck, thanks for the, the like over there on Facebook 90 minutes ago. Sorry to miss that. I was just probably panicking because the board didn't post at first. AMD AM4 on a B450. You know, takes a sweet time. So I was starting to go through a panic mode. Like, oh my gosh, it's not going to post. Anyway. We got a posting, uh, still don't have my capture card installed because it's busy time of the season and I haven't had any time to do anything for myself. <laughs> so, here we are, no capture card, can't move on, unless you guys want to sit here and chat. I'll chat while I'm loading Windows. I always want to see Scotty's reaction, or uh, Lance's reaction. I'm thinking of you, Scotty. Love this front mesh, by the way. Lots of really good airflow coming through the case. You can just feel it. For the price, this case, for the price, you cannot beat this.
We're all fired up. Just loading up some windows. Then we got drivers, battle tested. Make sure she's running peak performance, certified as bad boy, and Lance, your battle station will be ready. Yes, I accept the agreement. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am going to end the stream tonight. Um, thank you for everybody who stopped 